Procrastination is an important issue that most students face, including research students. What is procrastination? What are the causes and consequences of procrastination among research students? These are the questions that we will respond to. So first of all, the general meaning of procrastination. Procrastination generally means persistent or habitual delay in making decisions, in beginning to do things or in taking actions. So if we persistently and habitually delay things um, or take actions or make decisions, uh, we are actually indulging in the process of procrastination. Putting off until tomorrow what can or may be done today is something that we can associate with procrastination. Now, what actually procrastination means in terms of, in academic terms or in, uh, or what is actually research procrastination? So, the persistent or habitual delays in the beginning and accomplishment of academic tasks, um, that is academic and research projects or assignments. So there are, um, I, I must say, most of the research students often face this issue. Um, and they face this issue persistently that uh, they find it difficult to begin and complete tasks on time. So they actually face this process of delaying things, um, delaying academic and research projects and assignments. And so this kind of delay, which is, per which, which is persistent, might be considered as academic or research procrastination if research students or students in general actually indulge in this. Now, procrastination could generally be of two types. One is called the active or controlled procrastination and the second one is called the passive or uncontrolled procrastination. So researchers argue that all procrastination is not bad. In some cases, procrastination might be positive and it might lead to positive consequences such as better work, more deliberate decisions. On the other hand, passive or uncontrolled procrastination, which we, which we might also call uh, something, procrastination that is out of the control of uh, the procrastinator or the research student, we can also say non this non-deliberate uh, form of procrastination. This is something that might be generally considered as more harmful um, and this can lead to problems in the process of accomplishing uh, academic and research tasks. Now, first of all, what are the causes of procrastination? So first, what are the causes of active or deliberate, or in other words, positive procrastination? Well, generally, positive or deliberate procrastination um, can be because the procrastinator or the research students who are indulging in this type of procrastination might be might want to prepare well for the task that they want to do. So the initial preparation, making up of their minds and planning might take time. And so the preparation time might be one of the causes uh, for this active or deliberate procrastination. Then prioritization is, could be another re cause of active or deliberate procrastination, which actually means that the research student 
has certain priorities, so they have tasks that they need to accomplish, and they have ordered or pri prioritized, so they, they have uh, divided the time, and they have sequenced or logically organized, uh, so they want to logically organize the, the tasks, um, and so this prioritization of one task or another task um, or parts of one task um, or another task could be one of the causes of procrastination. Then time management. So some, uh, some of the research students who, uh, who get involved in the process of active or deliberate pro uh, procrastination might also do this because they want to manage their time well uh, and to manage their time properly in line with the requirements or the importance of the various tasks that they want to, to accomplish in the time that they have at their hands. So time management could also be one of the causes of active or deliberate procrastination. Then confidence. Um, the active or deliberate procrastination, uh, procrastinators might have confidence in themselves that they can accomplish tasks at a time of their choosing. So they have the confidence that they do not, need, that they do not need to begin the, uh, begin, begin the work on their tasks immediately. And they can, um, they can manage to complete to begin and complete their tasks at a later stage. Their, their previous experiences, their confidence in their skills and knowledge uh, might have a role in the kind of confidence that they have. And so this confidence might lead to active or deliberate procrastination. And the last one is the quality. The active procrastinators actually want to improve the quality of their work. And so for that, they need proper preparation. And they want to add to the quality of their work by learning tasks, um, improving their knowledge and skills, and getting more experience before they complete their task, and then hand, over, hand it over to their supervisors or to the examining committees. So these are, these are the causes of, generally the causes of, of active procrastination. Now the passive or non-deliberate or negative procrastination is procrastination that is generally not good. And this actually results in negative consequences for these procrastinators. So the first one in this one is the academic or, or cognitive factors that might lead to negative procrastination. That actually means lack of required knowledge or skills or, or experience um, that are needed for accomplishing certain tasks or assignments. And because the, uh, the research students do not have adequate knowledge or skills or experience, uh, so they keep on delaying the completion of their tasks, and so this type of procrastination is could be considered as negative because this leads to um, the wastage of time and ultimately to several other issues and problems. Then the psychological factors, um, such as fear, fear of beginning something uh, and completing something, uh, especially the things that where the procrastination, uh, procrastinator or the research student uh, find himself or her herself in, an, in a position where they, they think they do not have the capacity to complete the task, so that, can, that, that actually can lead to fear. Avoidance and over, in some cases overconfidence where the research student uh, is overconfident of their skills or knowledge um, that they can do it at the very last 
uh, hour uh, or at the very last minute, that can also lead to the negative or passive or non-deliberate procrastination. And the last one, lack of focus. Uh, this, the lack of focus on the, the beginning initiation and completion of the academic task could also lead to negative or passive uh, procrastination and again that ultimately, ultimately leads to the wastage of time and failure. Um, and the last one in this uh, list is social factors such as social interference. So there might be certain factors outside um, outside the, um, the researcher's own uh, you know, power and so that, that the, 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 the factors that, that might happen um, in their surroundings such as family um, or in their social circles, um, those are the things that, that might delay or cause procrastination or the beginning of the tasks on the part of the researchers. And so that, those social factors could also be considered as the negative or non-deliberate uh, causes of procrastination among these high students. Now, what are the consequences of research students' procrastination? So again, um, the consequences of um, procrastination among students um, are actually in line with the kind of procrastination that they are involved in. So um, those students, those research students who are involved more in active or deliberate or positive procrastination, the consequences are that they, this type of procrastination um, will prepare them better for, their, for accomplishing, for beginning and, and completing their academic tasks. And so it will result in better outcomes, such as better good quality research assignments or research theses um, or, and, and drafts. Similarly, um, because this type of procrastination helps them in prioritizing of their tasks or organizing their tasks that actually leads to better organization of their tasks and ultimately better presentation of their tasks. And again, it helps in better time management and ultimately such procrastination might lead to better quality of the research assignments or theses. The passive or non-deliberate or negative procrastination, on the other hand, has several negative consequences for the procrastinators, and these include uh, mismanagement of time and resources, and ultimately this leads to academic failure in um, actually either the non-completion of academic tasks or the completion of academic tasks in hurry, that, that actually hampers the quality of, of the academic tasks, including assignments and theses. And this also leads to psychological stress because they are not uh, able to, to properly begin, properly accomplish the academic tasks. Um, and ultimately, they either do not complete, are unable to complete and submit the academic tasks or they submit tasks that are not good quality. That further lead to psychological stress. And lastly, such type of uh, non-deliberate or passive or negative procrastination leads to socioeconomic loss cause in many cases, many procrastinators, research students as negative procrastinators procrastinators are unable to complete their research degrees and this is at the cost of a social of their social status and at the cost of economic losses so these are the negative consequences now in conclusion what we can see can say is that 
Um, generally, it is a good thing to avoid procrastination following the common wisdom, which is do not put off until tomorrow what you can do today. Um, further, in order to deal with the issues of procrastination, to avoid especially negative procrastination, interact with your research supervisor as frequently as possible. That helps you in focusing and in, 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 in getting encouraged to work harder and to work in, in a more focused way. Interact with and learn from the experiences of fellow research students, especially senior research students who have a reputation of, of being more organized and more successful as research students. Um, and the other thing that you can do in order to deal with this issue of procrastination is to keep updating and adding to your knowledge in the areas of your research by regular reading and discussions and presentations of your work. These things, regular reading, discussions, and, and preparation and presentation of your work actually keep you active, keep you involved, and keep you interested uh, and keep other people interested in your work that helps you in avoiding procrastination. And lastly, be organized. Uh, develop and follow a schedule during your research studentship. Generally, every student, every average research students who are more organized to have uh, a schedule that they follow or a timetable, they perform better and they are more successful in completing their research in comparison to even brighter students who are less organized um, in terms of completing their tasks. These are some of the some of suggestions for further reading.